Congressman Ron Paul says, I don't want to run your life. I don't want to run the economy. And I don't want to police the world. What kind of presidential candidate says that? Suddenly, you are this hot candidate with kids. You're the most Googled. You're big on the Internet. Do you know what that's about? Not completely. I love it. Uh, I always thought freedom ideas were young ideas. You know, in history, uh, freedom is a young idea. Tyranny is an old idea. Young people tend to be more principled, and uh, they're, they, they like that. And they know I've been dedicated to the principles of the Constitution. And they welcome the idea of uh, somebody that talks about uh, leaving them alone, letting them run their own lives. And leaving people alone is not something I often hear politicians talk about. That's, that's sad. And uh, I tell people the reasons I run for president not because of the things I want to do, but more because of the things I don't want to do. I don't want to run your life, and I don't want to run the economy, and I don't want to police the world. But who's going to do it if you politicians don't do it? That's what some people wondered. But, you know, I think what's happened, though, is the failure of government is becoming more evident than ever before, especially in this country, you know, the failure of taking care of the victims of Katrina, uh, the failure of the war, the bankruptcy of the Social Security system. Uh, the government hasn't protected us from lead in paints, you know, on and on. It just, just so goes on. Is there more government, more protection? Some people are arguing that, and of course I take the position that uh, government interferes too often. We become complacent and depend on the government to protect us, and they fail, and uh, they don't provide the services that they claim. You know, uh, we've, we've uh, had the government involved in our medical care system since the early 70s. We've had managed care, and all of a sudden nobody's happy with it. So now the choice is, did we have too much government, or do we need you know, a single payer? Should we move to, uh, toward a socialized system? Or should we look to the marketplace to help us sort out the problems we have in medicine? My argument, of course, is always looking for the answers in the free market, in private choices, and in individuals dealing with those problems, rather than depending on the state, which generally will support maybe the special interests, like today, too many corporations benefit from our medical care system. You oppose government funding for health insurance for poor children. This makes you alone in politics, just mm -hmm. about. That's right, and I think more poor, there'd be less poor children needing help if we had endorsed the ideas that I'm, I'm talking about. I was in medicine uh, before government was involved, and, you know, uh, there were a lot of poor people, and uh, there were a lot of church hospitals. I worked in a church hospital uh, partially for experience and partially to work in an emergency room, and I was paid $3 an hour in the early 1960s, but there was no government insurance. But everybody got taken care of. You know, and, and, and uh, then nobody was charged. But now today they come in and everybody's charged the maximum amount of money. Or they're put on to the roll. The government will pay it, put them on Medicaid, and jack the bill up. I mean, the attitudes are completely different. Before government got involved, people stepped forward and took care of poor people. Ab absolutely. Now they, we they expect did. government to do it. We expect government to do it, and uh, about all it does is when the government gets involved, say, in education or medicine, instead of increasing the quality of the care or the education or spreading it, it pushes prices up. So the quality of education in medicine has gone down. Uh, less people are getting the benefits, but look at where the prices have gone up the most. It's in uh, the areas where the government is most involved. It's hard for people to imagine how the care could be given without government once you're used to government. But you're an obstetrician. In your own practice, you don't take Medicaid or Medicare. How do people pay for it? Never, never did. Um, sometimes they'll pay a small fee. Sometimes they would pay nothing. And that's the way I, I, I was taught. You know, there's a hospital in my district in Galveston, Texas, and it's called the Shriners Hospital. It's well known. It's a burn hospital. And if you don't have any money, and you can go there, whether you're a child or an adult, you can be taken care of. And uh, if you, pay, you can pay, you pay. If not, you'll still be taken care of. So you would have a lot more uh, solutions like that. The society and the economy would be so much uh, richer. We'd be richer because government wouldn't be taking 50 40 percent of the money in taxes? That's right. I wouldn't have an income tax. I wouldn't be taxing people to run the educational system or running the medical system. This is hard for people to imagine. Medicare, free medicine for people 
your age. How can people, how can elderly people be taken care of without a big government program like that? Right now it's difficult because we've made a whole generation or two dependent. But the question that we ought to ask is if we continue to do what we do, uh, how are we going to finance it? Fewer people going into the workforce, cost of medicine going up. We, we, there's no funding for Medicare. It's under a greater threat than Social Security. The promises being made now are not going to be kept. Promises of they, free health care for elderly people. No, they can. Of course, there's no such thing as, as free health care. And, and my only, I think I have the only solution. People see me as a threat to Social Security and Medicare, but I think I'm the only one that uh, has a real solution because I've never voted to spend any money out of the Social Security Trust Fund because I vote against all those appropriations. Uh, your party created a prescription drug program. You voted against it. Don't elderly people need these drugs? Yeah, and that's why I voted against it, because their uh, government programs fail to work. And not a lot of elderly were and still are furious over that program because it's so complex and difficult. But a lot of people like it. Yeah, hey, I'm getting my drugs paid for. You, They're free. You, you know who else likes it? The drug companies. They spent quite a few millions of dollars down there. They did the highest lobbying, so uh, the profiteers uh, were the ones who really pushed that program. But the assumption shouldn't be made that if you didn't have it, people wouldn't get you know, their drugs. There are other ways. The market is designed, if you follow the market, to lower prices, not raise prices. You vote so. against all this stuff. I don't assist. don't your colleagues hate you? No, I think I'd like to think subtly that maybe they respect me a little bit. You know, it's because every once in a while they come up and say, "I wish I could get away with what you do," but uh, you know, I think people and my people in my district and hopefully in this campaign and I'm running now that people will, will respect these views and come around to understanding the economics and and I think that is what's happening. I think people are realizing. This country is bankrupt and we have to do something. It's not working, so they're looking for some solutions.